My portfolio just crossed the $60,000 mark. It's been one hell of a ride to get here, and I've decided to share this experience with you today. So buckle up, get strapped in. Welcome back to Everything Options. My name is Greg, and today I'm gonna to be showing you my $60,000 portfolio. So to break this video down for you, first I'm actually gonna show you how I got here, my experience in trading and investing over the past five years. Then I'm gonna show you the portfolio itself and everything inside of it. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing my $100,000 goal and how I plan to get there. And I know this video is gonna be a little bit different from my options trading strategy videos, but hopefully you still vibe with it. And if you do, make sure to leave a like down below. So my experience in the market, it's been a pretty crazy five years. I started back in December of 2016, and this was an era where day trading was extremely popular. And one of my biggest influences back then was Ricky Gutierrez, and he taught me everything I needed to know about technical analysis. And I kind of fell for this notion that you can make one to 2% per day by day trading. But then whenever I wasn't able to meet these high expectations, I got really disappointed and I actually ended up quitting trading. And I think this happens to a lot of new traders where they don't see the results that they want, so they end up just quitting altogether. So I took a hiatus from trading, but I was still investing in long-term shares. I put money into GoPro for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure why. And then I had probably about $1,000 in an Acorn account, which automatically invests for you, which was a really good approach since I wanted to take a laissez-faire approach. This allowed me to take a hiatus from trading from about mid-2017 to about late 2019, and it was in December of 2019 when I discovered options trading. I discovered this through the trading fraternity who used to hold live trading sessions each day. I was there every single day, eight hours a day, trying to wrap my head around everything that was options. I literally made this my entire life and I started my YouTube channel around the same time. And it might've been bad timing on my part, but I also invested $3,000 in February of 2020. Literally the Friday before the market crash, I put my entire life savings of $3,000 into the market. I watched that deteriorate to around $1,500, but I kept at it because I was determined to make trading and investing a career. I ended up actually quitting school, dropping out of my computer science degree and taking on trading full time. And in my first summer of trading, I was able to make $10,000, which was really cool because that's just about the same amount of money that I would have made through a tech internship. But then September of 2020 came around and smacked me with some real humility. At this point, I had $12,000 in Tesla debit spreads on battery day, expecting a huge move towards the upside. And I thought I was gonna make $70,000, but I didn't really account for the risk that I would actually lose $12,000. And this is how I learned to allocate my money properly to where I only have about 10% of my entire portfolio in options trading now. Luckily, I was able to rebuild this through my own cash, through long-term investments that I chose wisely on and got in early. And then finally, options trading has been pretty profitable for me. Back when I first started trading options, I was using weekly options, which have a pretty low probability of actually turning a profit. So my win rate back then was about 50%, and then the other 50%, I would just let them run into the ground and expire at zero. But now I've developed more strategies and become more knowledgeable in options trading to where I have about a 75% win rate now. My average return per option is about 20% right now, so I'm doing pretty good. And if you wanna see what options I'm trading every day, I post all my trade alerts to my premium Discord. You can find that in my Patreon, link down in the pinned comment below. But anyway, getting into the meat of this video, my portfolio. So my portfolio is actually broken up into multiple portfolios, as you can see from all the tabs that I have open right now. So I have BlockFi, I have MetaMask, I have PancakeSwap, I have M1 Finance, and I have Robinhood. So this allows me for one, security purposes in case one of these accounts gets hacked, I don't lose everything. And also this allows some diversity in different types of investments. So I'm gonna go through cryptocurrencies first, starting with BlockFi. So right now I have only two crypto balances in my BlockFi account, both worth a total of $5,670 right now. And I have $2,500 in Bitcoin, and then I have $3,100 in ethereum so this account is doing pretty well over the past month um it's up by 37 percent and this almost makes up about 10 percent of my portfolio when you add up all the cryptocurrencies that i hold that actually does make up about 10 percent of my portfolio and the next place that i have cryptocurrency stored is going to be in my metamask wallet so right now i have 0 0.2221 bnb and bnb is trading for around 485 dollars right now for a total value of 107 dollars here and finally, the last place that I have cryptocurrency stored is going to be on PancakeSwap. So this is a liquidity pool that I am staking in. It's actually called a farm and I have 2.52 cake and BNB liquidity pool tokens staked into this that are worth around $550 right now. And the current APR on this is 37% APR, which is really good. That means um, if we look at this, 
I should be making around $225 a year. And then that's all the cryptocurrencies that I have right now. And then the long-term investments that I have are mostly in this M1 account. So I have $34,528 in here. And some of my top holdings are Tesla. I have $14,700 of Tesla, 20 shares that I bought for an average price of around $300 or $350. And to get to this, I used dollar cost averaging back in the summer of 2020. And then I have 20 shares of Square also. Um, worth a total of $54.46 right now. And I use the same thing that I did with Tesla, dollar cost averaging pretty much every week, $100 a week. And I was able to build this to $5,400 right now. And then I have Apple, which I think it's kind of obligatory to kind of own. So I have $3,500 of Apple stock, then I have $3,000 of Fulgent. I have another $4,000 or so in my Robinhood account. We'll talk about that later. But then I have ArcG, $1,227 worth of that. And then the rest of these don't make up for much, but we'll just do a speed round here. So I have $1,119 of Thermo. I have $905 of Spy. I have $719 of Microsoft. I have $574 of XBank. I have $563 of Intuit. I have $478. XLK, I have $395 of IHI. Facebook, I have $383. Snapchat, I have $380. I also have another five shares in my Robinhood account. Then I have $339 of IYF. I have $279 of Workhorse. I have $250 of Hymax and a lot more in my Robinhood account. And then I finally have $219 of Boeing in my M1 Finance account. And now moving over to the Robinhood portfolio, we're actually going to cover the long-term investments first, and then we'll cover finally the options that I'm holding right now. So right now I have 452 shares of MAPS right now worth around $6,520. And this is a cannabis small market cap play um, that I'm expecting to be really big. Then I have AMD, I have 37 shares worth around 4,100 right now. And I think that the chip industry is really bound to boom over the next few years because pretty much everything you can think of that is digital needs a chip behind it. And I think that we're making a transition into a more digital world. So I think that chip makers are obviously going to do well. So I have AMD and then I have Fulgent, which is a genomic stock that I'm super bullish on over the next five to 10 years as genomics plays a bigger role in medicine. I have 44 shares worth $4,100. Then I have 240 shares of Hymax, which is another chip maker, but this is a small cap stock and I have $2,980 worth of this. I have another five shares of Snapchat worth $379. I have three shares of ArcG worth $264. I have 0.37 shares of Facebook and pretty much all of these are going to be fractional shares. Um, these are just the leftovers that I transferred from Robinhood over to my M1 account because they don't allow for fractional shares over there. So all of these are just leftovers. Then I have a couple free stocks like Siri, I have AMC that I actually bought into, I think back in January or February as part of the whole short squeeze movement. Then I have TQQ, leftovers, SPCE, $15 worth of that. So really none of these investments really make up too much of my portfolio, but I'll still um, keep them on the right. That way you can see my total investments. So for the juicy part of this video, my options holding right now, I have four credit spreads of SPY, $450 and $451 strike price is expiring at 910. So I'm betting on SPY being below $450 by 910. And my reasoning behind this is because usually September is the worst month for the stock market historically. And also I've noticed a pattern where on the monthly expiration date, pretty much every single month there's a drop for SPY. And then the next option that I'm holding right now is this coin put credit spread. So I'm betting on coin going up and I'm betting on it being above $265 on 917. So I have $500 of collateral in this one. And then I have two Intuit call credit spreads betting on Intuit going down and I accidentally opened two of these with separate expiration dates when I meant to open one. Um, so I'm actually down like 100% on this and that's why. And then I have these maps out of the money call options with a $15 strike price. I have six of them for a total value of $360 right now. And I'm expecting a pretty big move out of maps this week or so with macro environment being really good. And then I have these UVXY 2221 put credit spread betting on UVXY being above 22 on my expiration date of 924. Same reasoning that I had for SPY and betting on the markets going down with this. And then I have this HiMax cash secure put betting on HiMax being above $12. But if it is below $12 on my expiration date 10 8, I'm willing to buy 100 shares of HiMax at $12. So I have $1,200 of collateral in that one. Then I have this maps in the money call option with a 1250 strike price 
expiring October 15th. So I have a couple months in order to realize profits on this. And then I have this HiMax $15 call. So it's out of the money and I'm betting on it going up from now to uh, January 2022. And I have $618 in this. Then I have this maps in the money call option expiring the same date as my HiMax one, January 2022, worth $670. I have two of them right now. And then finally, I have these HiMax two option strategies. So this is actually a Zebra strategy that I covered in my last video. And what I did here was I actually bought two call options that are going for $310 right now. And I sold one call option going for $185. And the way this works is this gives me a 90 Delta. And this is probably the option that I'm most excited about because if I'm right about HiMax going up, I'm going to make a crap ton of money based on the Delta value. And that pretty much wraps up all the options that I'm in right now. So if we total all my portfolios together, I have $23,000 in my Robinhood portfolio. I have $34,528 in my M1 account. I have $550 in PancakeSwap. I have $108 in this MetaMask wallet. And finally, I have $5,663 in my BlockFi account. So I have about $64,000 across all my different portfolios right now, and I'm planning to get this to $100,000 by the end of the year. And here's how I plan to do it. I think a lot of this is going to come from cash. Right now I have a few income sources from options trading to YouTube to my Patreon, and now I'm trying to build my own app. So hopefully that'll start generating revenue as well. And usually at the end of the month, once I have all my finances sorted out, I have $3,000 of discretionary income that I'm allowed to put into the market. So this alone should take my account from $64,000 right now to $76,000 by the end of the year. But I'm going to need another $24,000 nudge in order to reach my $100,000 goal. And I think that a lot of this is going to come from the stock that I'm most bullish on, which right now is going to be HiMax, Maps, and Fulgens. I believe that my positions and options and shares for these companies could easily give me the $24,000 nudge that I need to get to the $100,000 mark. Right now, I have a total of $7,700 in maps. I have $5,138 of HiMax and I have $6,845 of Fulgent. And my price targets for these stock are absolutely balls to the wall. Maps I'm estimating to be worth around $30 per share. HiMax I'm estimating to be worth around $40 per share. And Fulgent I'm estimating to be around $300 per share. Now, I don't think that these price targets are gonna hit anytime soon, but I think that one of them might hit sooner than the others. And if it's either HiMax or Maps, I'm gonna be making a crap ton of money because I have options in that, and that allows me to leverage my returns. So that's my plan to hit $100,000 by the end of the year. Hopefully you're successful this year too, and next year and every year from here on out. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video, and thank you to all my patrons for the support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.